All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Government Affairs with the Dallas Area Chamber of Commerce. Today, our guest is City Councilor Scott Randall. Um, but before we do that, we will go around the room and just do a short intro of each of you. And if you have something that's going on with your organization, also be sure to use the chat to put those links in there so that we can uh, all grab those and be, have good reminders. I will watch the chat for Scott. I'll also watch for those hands raised or someone jumping up and down in their chair. Either of those will work to get my attention. So with that, let's start with Dan Spot. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. Dan Spots, Columbia Gorge Community College. Uh, nothing dramatically new to report, just keeping things on track in terms of working toward affordable child care center in the Dalles, uh, the agricultural technology program. We are making steady progress at that, aviation maintenance technician training, in addition to the programs we launched this past fall. So um, the next big step is going to be groundbreaking, not a groundbreaking, but um, really the the belated ribbon cutting for the skill center, trying to find a date for that in the spring once uh, COVID conditions allow. We had to postpone that last fall. We don't want to do that again. So we don't have a date yet, but uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Awesome. I look forward to coordinating that date with you. So David Peters. Good morning, everybody. Dave Peters, Columbia Cascade Housing, Mid Columbia Housing Authority. We have vouchers for renters. We have home ownership counseling, homeownership, down payment programs, home repair programs, and um, hopefully before too long, a community land trust. So hopefully I'll be keeping you in touch with that. Thank you. Awesome, Scott McKay. Uh, Scott McKay, I'm with the Mid Columbia Senior Center. A couple of things is that our new director, Rob Garrett, has started this week and he will be taking over and I think it'd be a fantastic fit for the center. The Saturday night bingo, we're starting to restarting that again. And we feel like the surge is, is past that surge of COVID cases. And so we're going to start again. And that's at 5.30 every Saturday. And then the other thing we discussed at a board meeting is that sometimes people aren't aware of our new to you shop. They may think of us as a senior center. It's just folks closed for old folks, that type of stereotypes that people may have. But we have a high quality um, selection of good quality used clothes that our volunteers sort through and we keep the best and then donate the rest to the other um, stores in the community. But we have a very small space so we have to only choose the very best. And so I encourage folks to come by Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and Saturdays from 10 to one. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Um, Scott, real quick on those notes, could you make sure that we get the information for the bingo so we can put you on the community calendar? That we also, I would do a flyer or something for the new to you so we can put that in the e-blast and let people know that it's there and exist. Um, and then um, I think you sent us, but I'm not sure, the AARP um, with the taxes. Do we have a flyer for that? Not that I am aware of. If we could, that would be great. We've gotten calls and we've been directing them to you. Yeah, we, we don't really administer that program. We just help folks get signed up for appointments. So okay. directing them to us is just fine. That's a good way of doing it. Then we can I, I, like chan I like channeling them through you. So if there's any other activities that are kind of that same demographic, you guys can help them with that. So thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Uh -huh. Brian Tuck. Brian Tuck, retired. You're short and sweet today, thanks. Travis Dre. There we go. Hi, good morning, everyone. Travis Dre, Mid Columbia Medical Center. Uh, I'm gonna copy and paste a link from an article. Um, we had Don Wensler, um, our Vice President of Patient Services on NPR with Will Smith, and then Will kind of took his quotes and put them into an article just on the difficulty that rural healthcare hospitals are facing trying to transfer patients out of the hospital. And then in addition, I'll be super excited. Hopefully by next week, we hosted a reporter and a photographer from the Oregonian that reached out um, and wanted to kind of come and look through the lens of rural healthcare from our nurses, our hospitalists, our ER team, our surgeons. Uh, so we spent the whole day with basically 10 to seven with the reporter and the photographer, and they got to see the extremely talented 
amazing staff that we have taking care of our community. So um, I'll be anxious to share that when it comes out. And it's a platform that is a probably a, it's an amazing opportunity, amazing opportunity. Just print alone in the Oregonian is over near 300K in visibility and Oregon Live is 10 million in visibility. So that is tremendous uh, opportunity to tell our story. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Travis. That's amazing. I know whenever we've hit the Oregonian, it has just boosted whatever we've got in there um, is even for tourism. So this will help with that business community also and making sure that we have a well community um, makes it so more appealing. Philip Brady. Thank you, Philip Brady. I'm a candidate for county commissioner, position number three. I'm having a kickoff event, virtual kickoff event this Sunday evening, I, about five to six. I'll put a, a, a link to it in the chat box. Thanks, hope to see you. Thank you, Philip Mosher. Good morning, Philip Mosher, Sotheby's Real Estate. Um, I wanted to uh, mention the current exhibit at the Art Center. Um, it's called Contemporary Native Voices, Prints from the Crow's Shadow Institute of the Arts. It goes until March 26th, and it's very well worth checking out. Um, really fantastic. And then I also wanted to mention that uh, my wife, April Streeter, is offering donation-based yoga uh, every morning, 7.30 to 8. Uh, if you know anybody, uh, and that's uh, online, Zoom. If you know anybody who is interested in that, um, let me know, and I'll send you the email where you can... Uh, uh, get access to that. That's sweet of April to do. Thank you. Tell her thank you for us. Thank you. Corliss Marsh. Good morning, everyone. Corliss Marsh with Habitat for Humanity, um, the Senior Center, and the Library. Scott kind of stole what I was going to say, so I want to just offer Scott um, that so he can say that he's retired. So in a couple of days, he'll be able to say he's retired. I think we need to make him a t-shirt that says, I am really retired. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right, Bill Lennox. Hi there, oops. Um, yeah, hi, good morning, everybody. I'm with Six Servers Dispute Resolution Center, also with the Dallas Beautification Committee. And we're working on a big project for the Dalles and trying to coordinate um, uh, a tree program potentially. And so, um, and um, see, let's see the other thing I'm working on. We're working with um, developing a, uh, a more comprehensive uh, working relationship with all the entities in our community. Thank you. Dan Richardson. Hello, good morning. Say, I don't want to steal any of my colleagues' thunder, so I will mention only that um, one thing, which is for the first time in maybe three years, we're going to do a citywide cleanup uh, party, get together, uh, a community work party in early May. So kind of keep your eyes out for that. It will be fun as well as uh, good for our town. Great. Thank you. Dawson, did you want to say anything this morning? Uh, nope. I just uh, just happy to be yep. here. Everyone, I'm Dawson Quentin. I'm the legislative director for Representative Greg Smith. And I'm, I'm always off camera for these because I'm uh, always uh, traveling to the Capitol. So just happy to listen in. Thank you. Perfect. You sure you don't want us to show us the view while you're traveling? <laughs> just kidding. All right, Stephanie, did you want to hop on or are you traveling also? I am good, if you can hear me all right. Yes. Um, Stephanie Bowen with North Wasco County School District. Um, tonight, we are having an open community forum for um, our innovative programming. And that's tonight at 6 p.m. at our Watonka campus. You're welcome to come in person or there will be a Zoom link available on our website and our social media page to log in that way as well. Great, thank you. Sylvan? I'm not sure. Um, 
Sylvan Shaw, did you want to introduce yourself? Oh, you're up there. You are muted and froze. There you are. I can see your smile. Okay, tell you what, Sylvan, why don't you drop a note into the chat box so we just know who you are and if there's anything that you want to do for announcements, because we would love to know who you are and all of those things and if there's anything going on. Um, hang on just one second. There we go. Um, so with that, um, really quick, the chamber has a lot going on before I go on to Scott. And um, we have many different activities have started back up. The biggest thing is Cherry Festival is in the course of happening and we are planning it all. So that will be April 22nd through the 24th. I am also bringing a fishing tournament qualification for a pro tour in May. Um, I can't give you a whole lot of details, but we will be releasing at least the community days um, activity on the Saturday. Because if we tell somebody the pro tour, what's going on, those pros will come and practice in our waters. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to give away the, the location, but that will be happening in May. And we're making that pro tour um, into so that one of those days is a community days and they will be fishing with a pro. So we're gonna have a little competition in our community with people coming in and fishing with the pro and see who gets the bigger fish. Um, along with a whole bunch of other things down at the Dallas Dam Visitor Center, we're gonna load that up with vendors and just have some community fun in May. So that'll be going on there. And with that, I am going to let Scott Randall, our city councilor, take over from here and give us some updates and have time for some Q&A. Thanks, Lisa, and thank you everyone for having me. Um, I'm a little humbled. I saw your uh, your guest list coming up, um, several uh, distinguished guests. So um, as I say, I'm humbled by that. Uh, I'll just talk most uh, about starting off most recently what we talked about uh, Monday night at the uh, city council meeting, um, the Dog River project. And that that is a uh, an upgrade to the, uh, the pipeline, bringing the uh, water to the city, the water infrastructure. Uh, they purchased, the uh, council agreed to purchase about 13,000 feet of uh, new pipeline to replace the old dilapidated pipeline, which I think is, some of it's 100 years old, made out of wood. So it'll be a, a big improvement for our water um, infrastructure. And that kind of goes along with uh, the planned improvements to the port as part of the, uh, the agreement with Google for improving that uh, uh, water infrastructure out there. Uh, the other thing that came up was, uh, Mid-Columbia um, Community Action Council and their um, planned navigation center. It's going to be out on uh, West Second, West 7th Street. Uh, I believe that's like behind Coastal, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they were um, donated that parcel of land from a community member and they have uh, secured about half of the funding they need to construct the, the center. Uh, they've got about 2.8 out of uh, a needed 5.8 million. Uh, the purpose of the navigation center is to address the shelter and service needs of the homeless. And what that will do is uh, streamline those services and uh, improve operational efficiency for all the different um, uh, partners, I guess, as uh, uh, partners or um, providers that will be in that, uh, that navigation center um, and establish a permanent location for the, uh, the pallet shelters. Uh, as you know, the, the, the pallet shelters now are out on a parcel of uh, city owned property uh, city owned right away out by um, the Dallas cherry growers. There's 18 um, of these uh, pallet shelters that each one of them can house two individuals. So a total of 36 people are being um, uh, provided housing out there. Uh, there's also, I believe, a, a sanitation center. I, I think last time I went out there, they had a sanitation trailer. So they have showers available out there. It's kind of been fenced and there's some privacy and stuff. Um, so if you haven't been out there to see what's going on, um, it's worth a look. So the, the navigation center is coming. Um, uh, again, they have to raise another uh, about $3 million to, uh, to um, begin construction. Um, trying to see if I have a list here of the different uh, service partners. So you've got the Oregon Human Development Corporation, uh, Columbia Gorge Health Council, Bridges to Health, Next Door, uh, Nachi uh, Wana Housing, Center for Living, uh, Mid-Columbia Housing Authority, and One Community Health. Um, and as I said, it's out on West 7th Street. 
and I think that's all I have for the navigation center. And that was that was pre uh, presented to us by Kenny Lapointe, who's the director. Um, also on Monday we had we talked about Vision 2040, the visioning process. There was a survey uh, conducted um, last fall. They had about 430 respondents. And uh, some of the key, theme, key themes that came out of that survey was uh, the people desired for the, um, their vision for the, for the DAOs for the future is upgrade uh, the high school and public health facilities, uh, support affordable housing opportunities and small business diversity, maintain bike paths, walking trails, river access, alternate ways to get around, continue to revitalize downtown with mixed use development and places to gather and to honor diversity, honor diverse history with family friendly cultural events. And that will be, uh, there was some thought that there, uh, not enough um, opportunity was provided to, uh, to gather input from the community members. So there will be another um, survey, I believe being um, sent out and uh, as well as a, uh, um, a town hall meeting to, uh, to collect people's ideas and thoughts about um, what direction the city should take in the future. Uh, and I think that was pretty much it for Monday's meeting. Um, we, we got some some pretty significant things coming up in the Dalles. Uh, I think the biggest thing in, in my mind is the uh, proposed relocation of the Mid-Columbia Medical Center uh, out to Kramer Field and then relocate, relocating those, um, those ball fields to the uh, proposed uh, sports complex on the 30 acre parcel of land um, that the county received from Google, which is out um, by Norcor. Uh, this is a huge deal, I think. I think it's, uh, it will transform the city in, in a big way. Um, obviously, it's an it's, uh, improvement, improvement for the, the health care services in terms of location. Uh, their location up on the hill is, is problematic. And, and um, by going out to Kramer Field, uh, more centrally located, easier to get to, a larger campus. But also that uh, the property that's um, currently... Um, where the, the hospital currently sits will be um, opened up and available to uh, uh, increased housing uh, opportunities and developments. So I think that's a, that's a huge, I think, transformational change uh, that may be coming about soon. Um, does anybody have any comments or, or uh, ideas, yes. thoughts, opinions about about that? Uh, so about any, uh, we do have we do so have far? one question. We have one question regarding the city survey results. Are those available on the website? Do you know uh, which which website are you referring to? The city's, the city's website. website. Yeah. I you know I'm not sure. I'd have to. I I don't know um, okay. where you would find those results. Uh, actually, I think if you went if the minutes are, from the meeting are available, uh, or I, or the agenda from the council meeting, um, they would be on. Uh, okay. The responses would, would be on that 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 that, uh, that website. Yes. All right, so I will quickly look, Dan, most likely that's in the agenda um, on the city site. So I'll find that really quick and find uh, and put the post up. So um, yeah. I brought I brought just one sheet from that. I had, I had a whole handout, but I just brought one of the sheets, the one that I read off of. So I apologize. I don't have that uh, information where that was. That's OK. Um, so any other questions at the moment? They're still drinking coffee, Scott. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that. I, like I say, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about this uh, this proposed move, uh, Mid Columbia Medical Center going out to the, uh, the that location. I think that's I think that's like I say, a huge thing for the city if it trans if it transpires. Uh, something else coming up for the city is we are recruiting for a, a new city manager. Our current manager, Julie Kruger, will be retiring soon, and so we put out um, we've hired a, a recruitment firm out of Seattle to. Uh, to canvas the nation for uh, applications <clears throat> they've been received and and we're going to begin that process of interviewing and, and screening for um a new city manager and so that's that's uh that'll be a big thing for the for the city um wall dogs and uh, down <clears throat> downtown main street will be um doing their uh murals this spring i think they were scheduled for last year but they were canceled so i, I believe as many as 19 murals are planned for the downtown area uh, several of them are actually being, uh, um, have already been approved through the Historic Landmarks Commission. A few of them, two of them uh, were approved last week and upcoming, there'll be a couple more that they're going to be um, uh, uh, applications for um, murals on 
uh, a couple of buildings. One of them I know is a city police uh, building. Um, what else? Uh, as Dan Richardson mentioned, there's an upcoming uh, community cleanup. Um, it's different from the, uh, the beautification committee's uh, monthly cleanups. This one will be, I believe, encouraging citizens to, uh, to clean up their properties, uh, uh, you know, whether it's painting or, or um, picking up the yards and, and lawns and whatever they have, I believe will be put out on the curb to be picked up by the, the sanitation services. So um, there'll be some coordinating and, and uh, some, uh, some, out, some outreach to the community to let them know this is happening as, it's, as it gets scheduled. Uh, another big thing that I think is happening is the land use uh, amendments that were um, as a result of some legislative action, uh, which um, provides for uh, increased or more, I guess more dense housing. Uh, smaller lots are going to be approved and, and uh, more units per lot. Uh, I think up to three units, um, uh, like a triplex can be built on a, uh, what, what used to be traditionally single housing, single family dwelling lots. So. Um, that's that's something that was um, kind of handed down to us by the uh, Oregon State Legislature, and, and so we have uh, amended our codes to uh, to allow for that. Uh, the Tony's building uh, construction is um, going to or not um, not construction destruction demolition of the Tony's building will be uh, um, going forward. I think they have to get a lot of um, permits and uh, um, testing done for uh, asbestos abatement, lead abatement, that type of thing. But that is scheduled to be demolished, and that property will be. Um, repurposed for some other uh, community um, uh, event or, or uh, community Scott? purpose. Hey, yes. Scott, do we have, did you, I'm sorry if I missed it, did we have a projected month when that might happen? The demolition? Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't think so. I think they're still, like I say, it's still in the process of getting um, the permits, I think, for, for all the different uh, hazard mater hazardous materials that we have, have to be dealt with. Um, I know it was scheduled at one point, but it had been delayed because of that. So, um, but they are, but they are moving forward with it. That, that has been, that's the decision that has been made, but it will be demolished. Do you, do you think that will happen before April or in April or later? Uh, I, yeah, I doubt before April. Yeah. Okay. Phew. All right. We yeah. have a cherry <laughs> festival to put on in the downtown. Yeah. That was just like, yeah, yeah I don't think so. it's going to be, it, it may okay. be late summer even before that, um, Okay, I can handle that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we also received the city also received a, an annual financial report, and uh, we are you know financially the city is doing very well, um, very healthy report. Um, there are some improvements going to be happening out on West Sixth Street, uh, turning lanes, I believe, out by let's see, I think around like Bymart in that area, Bymart, and uh, what else is out there? Anyway, that, there's a stretch of this West Sixth Street where there's some problems with uh, turning. I think if you're westbound turning uh, to go south, and so they're gonna make a turning lane along a certain stretch of that uh, West 6th Street to improve traffic flow. Um, I think I've covered pretty much everything I had on my list here. Uh, upcoming events, there's going to be um, a Mardi Gras event in town. I think it's next Saturday, the 26th, uh, put on by the, uh, the Dallas Main Street. And uh, I think tickets are still available. It sounds like it's going to be a pretty, um, pretty enjoyable and uh, entertaining event. Uh, again, that's Saturday night. It's, it's a 21 and over, and they'll be taking, they'll be having that at the, um, in the old Chronicle building. So, like I say, I think it's going to be a sellout crowd. So, if, if you're interested in going, I encourage you to uh, get your tickets while you can. And those are available, I believe, from uh, downtown Main Street or um, Last Stop Saloon. I think is where you can get them. Uh, also coming up uh, as part of my day job, I'll be going to a, uh, on the 25th of this month, I'll be attending a, uh, a skilled trades job fair in Redmond. Uh, I think there'll be like 500 students will be attending and I will unofficially be um, discussing the opportunities available at the Columbia Gorge Community College with the, the skill center they have there. Uh, as it was er earlier mentioned about the, uh, the aviation technology, the construction technology, the, the skilled trades that are gonna be um, offered at the community college and also uh, career opportunities in the mid Columbia area. So um, excited about that. Looking forward to um, promoting our area. And that's about all I have for now. Does anybody have any, any questions or any, anything they might want to talk about as far as uh, upcoming things for the Dalles? 
Um, I am going to make a note um, before I call on Dan. Scott, can we put some time on the calendar after you go to the job fair? Um, I have several partners who are interested in doing something here in the Dalles. Okay. So I'd sure. kind of like to know how that worked in the attendance and participation. Yeah. Um, so I've had several larger employers and some small ones seeking some help with that. So let's get something on the calendar and pick your sure. brain and see how it went. Yeah, absolutely. All right. With that, Dan Spots, you had a question. Thank you, Lisa. And Lisa, to your comment just now, we would like to plug into that conversation as well. Definitely. Um, oh, Scott, regarding a different topic completely, and you had mentioned it before, the Dog River Pipeline. Are there any uh, plans for uh, micro hydro as part of that? You know, that's, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if there's any plans for that. I know Hood Rivers Irrigation District has had uh, some, some small hydro on their uh, irrigation system for, for decades. Um, yeah, good question. I don't know if there are any plans. None that I know of anyway. Just kind of curious if there is. A and I but certainly don't want to get into any delays or anything like that, but the electromechanical technology program at the college with renewable energy, uh, that began with, uh, with hydroelectric and it's, oh, okay. Part. Yeah. Yeah. So I, there might be a training opportunity or a partnership, who knows, but maybe we can catch yeah. up. Yeah. Okay. And, and I believe, I believe small hydro has actually got quite a bit of, um, uh, like, like funding available. I think that's considered, you know, one of the one of the renewable resources they want to promote and uh, and support. Okay, thanks. Dan Richardson has a question. Well, more of like commentary, Lisa. But thank thank you, Scott. There's quite a lot going on in our little town now and in the uh, in the near future. Uh, it's actually kind of exciting. Um, hopefully mostly all positive uh, developments. I would encourage people, uh, everybody here to sort of help. Uh, I'm underlining a, a point I think that's already been made. Um, help us get word out about the virtual town hall and the follow-up survey. So we did a, a, a visioning survey, you know, that um, went out to, I don't know, 600 people and there were some flyers and some additional outreach. But there's going to be essentially a repeat, a second survey, and a more energetic outreach effort yet. And we expect to see some material, some flyers, some uh, posts and such uh, coming out imminently. If you don't get those, please let me know and I will pass that on. If you do, please share it with any membership groups or um, email lists or that sort of thing. It's okay if people get the same note more than once. In fact, it's probably helpful. And um, this is really an opportunity for people that perhaps don't always get involved with public affairs or um, community service or that sort of thing to speak in a, in a way that's really a low barrier to entry. And um, that might be helpful to have a, a pretty wide cross section of ideas go into the survey for us. It's really, to my mind, uh, somewhat of developing our marching orders for the years to come. You know, we're not gonna be just working in the city or the community on, on survey results, but they will really, I think, help guide some of our efforts and hopefully also develop some new ideas. So pass the word. Thank you. And let us know how we can help with that at all. Travis Dre. Thanks. Thanks, Lisa. Um, so I just wanted to say, Councilmember Brown, thank you so much for uh, one, taking the time to kind of talk us through uh, the initiatives and the objectives and outlining the survey, as well as the support for the campus and the athletic complex. And I just wanted to kind of give everyone a little, maybe they know, maybe you don't know, but I think. Uh, Commissioner Heggie was on a few weeks ago and just kind of referenced the 50% split of the CSF dollars that was recommended to the tax districts. And the tax, the tax districts, I believe, get kind of an educational session on the 28th. And then sometime in early March, they'll actually make a vote on how those dollars, if they get split up, will they get split up? 
50% to themselves, 50% to a greater good project, potentially like the athletic complex. So um, I did meet with the president of the parks board chair yesterday, Tracy Dujic, and we kind of talked through this. And I know the parks board, the, par the, the, the parks rec tax district is very much in support of the greater good project. So if there's other folks that you know, um, all of you with your massive networks within those di districts, if it's a greater good project that you support, it may be worth just kind of voicing to them, hey, here's an opportunity for you, your vote to make a significant change, a monumental change in our community. So getting those like 50% of those dollars would put the project really into drive where the county can begin, you know, looking at how those 35 acres best set up for our community. What we put together on November 3rd was just a proposal that demonstrated the use of all those athletic fields from RV parking to turf fields, et cetera. But it gives the county a chance to really kind of push forward. It also gives the McClellan Medical Center a chance to start looking at the campus, begin working very closely with Sheriff McGill and the Columbia Resolution Center, as well as start looking at our own campus and turn it into affordable housing. So there's a lot of moving parts, but the first lever has to get pulled and it starts with uh, February 28th when the districts, I think, get their educational session. So if you all are have the, have uh, some colleagues, some friends, some neighbors that serve our community in, the, in those capacities, it'd be great to just kind of pass that word on. So I just appreciate it. Thank you, Council Member Randall. Thank you, Travis. Any other questions? Well, Scott, I'm gonna do something I do every now and then uh, when we have a little extra time. Do you have questions of us? We are your partners in this community. You have several in this room. You have their undivided attention. So do you have questions for any of our organizations or comments for us or how we can help you? Um, actually, I think um, Travis, mentioned the, res the resolution center, which I think is also going to be part of uh, the proposed uh, campus on the, uh, the Kramer Field location. That, that I think um, would probably kind of tie in with the, the navigation center, which would be just right down the road um, as far as services um, to the, um, to the uh, I guess, homeless, but also the, uh, you know, the mental health and, and the, um, the, the problem we see with the homelessness uh, happening all over the country. I think that's, I think there are things happening. Um, the navigation center, the resolution center that are upcoming that um, I think will help mitigate a lot of the issues that we're having with the homeless and the mental health in our city. That's just kind of a final comment. <laughs> but yeah, no questions for, um, for the others. Mm -hmm. Dan Spot. I love it. I love all your questions. <laughs> no, it's more, more a point of information. Um, okay. Scott, you probably uh, are teaming up already, but Amber Tilton from uh, Corps of Engineers is also going to that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. actually who I'm going with. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she had reached out to us also. So I, good. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank uh -huh. you. Any other questions? Okay, I'll jump in again. Granada Good. Block. <laughs> Granada Block, how are we doing? Um, I think the, uh, the recreation, uh, the old recreation uh, lanes uh, building, there's uh, the continuing with the construction on that. Um, I think the facade, I believe, is, is pretty much complete. It's, I think the interior work is still going on. I believe it's going to be like three different businesses inside, uh, some outdoor seating. Um, I think there's some things planned for the basement. I haven't really been following that very closely, but I think they're uh, they're they're getting close to being complete. Fantastic, thank you. Yes, and one of those businesses will be an ice cream candy store, um, and that will um, be actually a family member who will own and manage that piece of it. So we've been in doing intensive research, and I don't know if it's real research or just an excuse to go get ice cream all over the state. So, but they've been looking into that seriously so that we'll have something right in the downtown. We know we have one other ice cream shop by the Civic, but this will give people choices and 
from a tourism point of view, if we have two to three of those types of businesses of a similar kind, then people draw to us. If we only have one, they don't. They, uh, for some reason, want choices in groups of three. So this will be a great job to add that and be able to have ice cream on both ends of downtown. So then that way you can walk in between and work off the calories and go get more. So yeah, it's a great plan. I, I will volunteer to help taste test if need okay. be. I will, I will call you, Stephanie, and we'll just Instagram the heck out of it, right? <laughs> yeah, I love it. I also have All a couple right. little girls that I'm sure would. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're cuties. So that would work. Um, just so you guys know, I'm actually not in the Dalles right now. Um, I am in Portland and I'm sitting in a hotel because the Dalles is at the Northwest Sportsman Show uh, with a 10 by 30 booth representing our community um, and all of the fun things and activities we have going on in our community. So I will be here uh, working that booth from about 10 till 830 every day uh, through Sunday um, promoting our community. We have uh, Tierra de Lobos in our booth, uh, representing one of our small businesses and doing wine samples. Uh, we have many games and all those things to do pulling. We have a great giveaway that's about a 1200 buck uh, value that uh, the chamber went and bought uh, gift cards from all over our businesses so that we could support our small businesses instead of asking for a handout, uh, knowing that times are still stuff, tough. So we're giving that away. Um, and then just promoting our outdoor recreation and attractions. And I will say, I think I stirred up quite the buzz yesterday for our Neon Sign Museum. Uh, this was the right demographic that that just like caught their attention very quickly. And they're like, what? No way you have that in your town. So um, that was kind of fun to share uh, along with some of our other historical attractions. But uh, so we're stirring up the buzz. Uh, we actually had a large amount yesterday of uh, people that were not fishermen. So that was great. We have the right things in our booth to attract another audience besides the fishing. And so I was very pleased with how many people we came through and talked to yesterday. So um, that is where I'm at all week. So don't go looking for me at the office. I won't be there. And um, with that, Bill Linux has a question. Yeah, speaking of the Neon uh, Sign Museum, I think that's a really good thing to talk about, uh, Lisa. And But the irony that I see is that we have neon signs uh, throughout in places in our community, uh, like the Sears Roebuck and the Flying A, but the, but the building itself, the neon, the, mu the museum itself doesn't have a thing. And it strikes me as being very odd, and I understand there's probably historical landmark things going on with the building, but there still should be a way for people coming through town to be able to know that that museum exists. And at the present time, there's nothing that does that that I'm aware of. Just a point, I think it's important because it is a special museum, and I think it, it would be doing a lot better for our community if there was a way to get the word out. Um, I'll, I'll talk to David on that um, and just see, um, you know, maybe it's something that it could be a standalone structure where the sign is rather than on the building, because I'm sure you're right, there's sure there's some historical factors there. Um, and so maybe it could be something that's on that physical sign, there could be um, a neon representation. Um, I know that I just need to find it in my budget also, because he has a very special sign that is Chamber of Commerce. And it actually says Chamber of Commerce and he needs to refurbish it. And then we want to put it on our building and I will be the one building. It actually says what we are. So um, I'm super excited about that. Uh, he brought it to our office and showed us what it looked like. And so now I just got to find it in my budget so I can pay him to refurbish that and hang it up on my thing. So um, we're pretty right. excited about that, but um, and Don Hurt already gave her excitement of approval that somehow we would make that work on our historical building. Um, so um, it's kind of exciting to see that, but I will talk to him. That's a good point, um, Bill. So, but it was fun yesterday to really, um, of course, I always have fun talking about our highlights of our community and just our community overall. So we had a lot of fun yesterday just talking about people. Some had been there, some had never been there. 
Um, some had made it to Hood River, but they hadn't gone that 20 more miles. So we convinced them yesterday it was worth to go the 20 more miles. Sure. Um, so we did have fun. And like I said, I'll be there through Sunday. So I'll have lots more opportunities to talk about it. So um, any other questions, comments you guys can share because we have time. Scott's giving you lots of time unless he has some other comments. But we can just, you know, what's going on in your organization that we all need to know about. Yeah, I'll pop in here, Lisa, for just a second. I've got a question. So Scott um, was appointed to city council and edged out many a good person for that appointment, including me. So I'm gonna put him on the spot here. Scott, have there been any surprises for you? Anything you weren't expecting that you have found um, during your term of service on the council so far? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Um, I think the biggest surprise, I thought the council would be like a collegial type thing where you all kind of like knew each other. But, and I know COVID kind of changed. I actually, I don't think we've met in person maybe once or twice since I've been on the council because uh, I, I was actually um, appointed when COVID was kind of like hitting the, uh, the community. So um, that might have an impact. But I think also just I didn't I wasn't aware of the fact that you can't have more than three councilor members together at one time or it's considered a public meeting. So I thought we'd be like all kind of know how each other stood on different issues just because we know each other and we, we talk a lot. But there's, there's really not that much going on. I mean, there's side conversations between individual council members, I know. But but that's that was kind of a surprise for me. I, I, it's a little bit different. But but again, I'm looking forward to um, when we can meet back in person. Um, you know, the chamber has been remodeled. And I think we, we've used it once, I think, for a work session. But uh, yeah, so, so anyway, I'm looking forward to a chance we can uh, um, have you know, little side conversations in person um, before the meeting and after the meeting, that type of thing. So um, that's kind of the biggest, the biggest, I guess, misconception I had about how, how it would be on the council. But, but I've, I've been enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, um, I, I really do would like uh, doing what we do. Give me a call when you get back in town. It's been a while since you and I had uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. time face to face and we should do that. Yeah. You know, with that note, I want to make sure that, and I've got two of you on here, so I can tell you this. Um, my office is always open. You know, if any city councilor ever wants to come and have a chat, ask us what's going on, connect with me, uh, let me know how I can help you. Um, looking at some of that economic development, any of those parts and pieces, my office is always there. I would love to connect with you guys on a consistent basis. So um, see if that can fit into your crazy schedules anywhere um, and let me know. So obviously we can't have all of you in the same room with me at the same time. So um, I would appreciate, you know, just the connectivity, even if it's just once a quarter, uh, reaching out, seeing how tourism goes, see how the chamber's doing, how our businesses are how they really are hanging in there um, and all of those different factors. So Scott, this is Brian Tuck. What do you consider the most critical issues facing our community in the next year or two or three or four or five? Uh, thanks, uh, good question. Um, a lot of changes coming up, a lot of, you know, and, and change always, you know, causes upheaval in people's lives. And, and there's, there's gonna be some people who aren't happy with the way things are going. Uh, the developments that are taking place, um, you know, with Google and, and with, you know, the proposed uh, construction of the, you know, or, or relocation, I should say, of the uh, the medical center. Um, I, I think really the, uh, the the issue of homelessness, I think that's that's one that um, I see it every day as I drive through town. Um, and, and we all know what's going on in the, in the larger cities and how bad it can get if it's not dealt with appropriately. And I don't know, you know, there's, it's, it's a very complex issue. A lot of different um, angles of, of approach to uh, to try to address it, the different issues. But um, we need to stay focused on that, I think, and and try to uh, try to make it the best situation as we can for the community. Because, uh, like I say, there's there's no easy answers. But but I think we're heading the right direction. I think this navigation center and, and the resolution center that that's that's a big deal. That's part of the problem is nowhere for these people to go for for the the, the help and the resources that they need. Um, so that, that's just my, my opinion, what I think is the biggest issue facing not just our community, but I think communities throughout the, throughout the country. 
I will say that the city kicked it in gear this last week. Um, we had that car fire down by the chamber over the weekend, last weekend, and there was a tremendous mess before the car fire, and it was just building up on both sides of the sidewalk. It was awful. Uh, we had some tourists leave um, before they even got out of their cars to our office um, just because of the presence. And after the fire on that Monday, oh my gosh, the city crews and some other pieces and parts cleaned that up and even hauled the car away and all of the other truck load full of garbage that was sitting on the streets just in that one little partial block. So I appreciated it greatly. I was ready to send you guys a note with pictures because I was there on the weekend and the crews showed up on Monday and I said, never mind, I'll be a good girl and not um, say anything. But it, I was losing tourists the week before because the weather was nice, but people were very agitated walking all around the chamber. So um, I appreciated the cleanup that does help. It detours them for the, another couple of weeks and then they start coming back. So it is something we need to address quickly. Otherwise, we're not going to have a visitor center that's very welcoming to the outside people. So. Thanks for making efforts there. You know, that's, that's interesting, Lisa. I, I, I'd heard a little bit about that fire, but I was going to ask, I mean, I'm kind of curious. Uh, my impression was that that area around the chamber, because uh, that was kind of the hot spot for a while. Uh, that's where the most complaints were getting from the citizens about homelessness. And then when the pallet shelters came in, it seemed like that helped quite a bit. Is that just, um, does, does it kind of go in cycles? Like you say, does it get, get um, better and then kind of get worse and, and back and forth or is it, well, the pallet shelter has very strict rules on who can stay there and yeah. you have to abide by the rules. Well, these are the people who don't abide by any rules uh, yeah. and that's who's hanging out at the chamber. So this is the worst okay. of the worst. We, we have the worst of the worst. We've got them either dropping their drawers, shooting up, screaming, hollering, leaving garbage, destroying our property. I've had to replace lights. I've replaced windows. I put up security cameras that the police all have and they use regularly. Um, you know, the chamber is putting out expense. Every time we turn around, we're having to have something repaired. Um, so these are the people who do not qualify for the pallet shelters. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's and what makes the it such a... Yeah, they don't care either. They're, they're in a state, they aren't aware that they don't care. Um, you know, so this is, and this is what's greeting our people as soon as they pull in the parking lot. And um, so it's a tough one. It does not have a simple solution. And I want to be a part of it um, because obviously my business depends on it um, to have that clean area and very welcoming. Um, so um, let me know however I can help in any situation. I'm there. Uh, it looks like Dan Spots has a question. Sorry about that, Lisa, but keep on coming up with ideas here. Um, Scott, going back to that job fair, uh, I touched bases with Amber about that. We're going to have some reprinted stock on all of our uh, skills programs, probably by the first okay. of the week, if not the end of this week. How can okay. I get those? How can I get those to you, City Hall? Uh, pardon me. Leave them at City Hall. How do I get those to you? You, you can do that, or we could arrange a, a meeting. And I can pick them up from you directly. I uh, do you work up at the campus? Is that yes. where you, do you have an office up there? Uh, I, I do. Right down the street. Well, I'm working remotely almost all the time. I'll be around. Uh, you know, we'll make it happen. So yeah, okay, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you have my uh, my number? Or okay. I do not. I can do if you don't mind, or or can I catch? I'll, I'll email you. I'll email you, Scott. Okay. That's yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. So with that, any other questions? If not, I'll give you a few minutes left in your morning to go drink a second cup of coffee before you have to get to your real jobs. All right, with that, thanks so much, Scott. I appreciate your openness. I appreciate your candidacy. That just means sharing and what's going on. And um, I look forward to connecting with you later. Um, so with that, everyone, have a great Thursday and I will see you guys next week. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you.